Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Erin and I do mostly budgeting videos. Uh, so I'm gonna get right into this and we are gonna go over our month of February household budget. I haven't transferred anything out of here yet. I was contemplating on using my big happy planner instead of this smaller size, just so I had some extra room to write in. But for now, my printables are set up for the happy planner classic. So we'll stick with that. All right, so here's what one of my printables look like for a monthly budget. All my principles are different because I budget differently at different times of the month and year. So the monthly budget is something that we'll just take into consideration all of our paydays. And my husband and I usually have both have income coming in, but right now I'm just going to focus on my own and I'm going to focus on the amount of bills that we have due. And so instead of seeing four or five paydays or Fridays during the month, you're going to see two. And until... I think October, I don't have a third pay again. I had a third pay because I get paid bi-weekly. I had a third pay in January, but that won't happen again until October. That just happens twice a year, every year. And so we are going to get into things very quickly uh, by marking off the dates that we don't have income coming in. Now, let me preface this by saying that my husband is currently laid off and his income, his unemployment is sporadic. Uh, he should be going back to work within the next six to eight weeks. This is something I've talked about consistently in all of my videos. And I just wanted to let you guys know that once uh, he is back working on a regular basis, I will then uh, incorporate all of his income back into our working budget. But until now, I just thought it would be good to show you what is consistent and what is secure as far as what's coming in. Uh, so I'm just going to put a line through week one because I do not get paid until I believe the 14th of February, which I, I think I do have a calendar here. Let me double check my dates because that's important. No, not the 14th. Yeah, the 14th. I get paid the 14th and the 28th. All right, so week two will be February 14th. And it is an absolute coincidence that my pen matches the background of this printable. Week three, I'm going to put a line through. And then week four is going to be February 28th. And it is a leap year, so we do have 29 days this month. Uh, it doesn't really affect anything as far as our budget, but just something interesting to note. So this is going to be February. I should have done this first. February... 2020. Right now, I'm just going to put two in parentheses for number of paydays. And if my husband happens to get paid unemployment on any of those uh, during any of those weeks, I will go back and I will addend this to include that total just so it is an accurate picture of what the month of February in 2020 looked like for us. I like to keep that just for archiving purposes. So my income is 15, 17, and then the second payday, it'll be, oops, 15, 14. So this is and change. It's like 15, 17, I don't know, let's say 38. You know what I mean? Uh, but for whatever reason, my income differs by $3 usually. So if I get paid 15, 17 on one payday, it's, pretty, it's pretty likely that my next paycheck will be 15, 14. And I don't know, I guess it's just how taxes and deductions work, but, um, that is my consistent income. And so expenses, I'm going to put down 1500. Now, why am I doing it like this? Well, because usually our expenses during the month are divvied up amongst paydays according to the date they're due. So if week one, for instance, we had a typical paycheck for my husband coming in, I would take out of this everything that is due between, let's say, the first and the seventh. And so I would pay all of those bills. Um, well, actually, 
anything between the 1st and the 13th because I don't get paid again until the 14th. And so since I don't have that coming in, I'm just divvying this up. Now I will get into the nitty gritty of this during my paycheck to paycheck budget with me videos. And that's where I will list all of our bills, all of our fixed expenses, all of our all of our variable expenses, and it gets very, very specific in those videos. But for right now, I'm just gonna ballpark this right here. And I kind of went over our bills again, and some of them I were, I was guessing or planning a little bit high, and some of them maybe not quite high enough. So when I looked at everything, it came out to 29, 29 something. And so just under $3,000. Now, as you guys can see, I barely, make enough to cover that. So I do, I do, but I don't make much more than that. So um, remaining will be $17 here and remaining will be $14 here. So that is going to be $31. This is going to be $3,000. And this is going to be, let's see, one, three, 3031, expenses 3000 remaining $31. Now let me say again, this is based on if he doesn't get paid at all for the month of February. So I, I don't know what's going to happen or um, sometimes when he has to refile uh, for his benefits, it usually takes a few weeks. And at one point it took seven weeks for him to get a check. Uh, so I just wanted to mark it down like this because I don't wanna bank on anything that might not show. So you're probably wondering to yourself, what does this actually include? So this will include our fixed expenses. So our car leases, our mortgage, all of our utility bills, our debt, um, student loan, uh, cable bill, everything is in there. What's not in there and what I would probably uh, get into more detail about every week is our variable expenses. So in this amount, we don't have food, gas, um, dog food, we don't have any miscellaneous money, we don't have anything like that. And so what you're seeing is basically to cover the basic expenses, basic needs. Well, it's not even basic needs because we don't even have food coming out of this. Um, so it's okay, you're probably <laughs> also wondering, well, what do you do to cover the rest of those things? So basically all we'll do is pull from our savings account. And if you saw my paycheck to paycheck video from last Friday, you know that we got paid a lot extra. He got paid out the remainder of his unused vacation. So that was a nice chunk of money that we can then utilize in the coming weeks. And also February is a no spend for me. I've talked about this before and I wanted to do a couple months during this year where I didn't spend on anything unnecessary. So when I say no spend, um, no spend is unnecessary items. So what I will spend money on is food, um, also any kind of medication that we need, dog food, gas, um, you know, your basic necessities. What I won't spend money on is clothing, planner supplies, anything hobby related, uh, going out with coworkers at lunch at all, um, you know, anything that's not crucial. And so that is going to kind of help us too during February. And what's nice is, you know, our cupboards and freezer, they're stocked and we really don't need to buy a whole lot. And um, I think we're pretty set. So the money that we got from his unused vacation payout will tide us over just fine for the entire month of February. The only thing I wanted to address before, um, before I signed off on this and ended this video was, I did receive a comment from somebody and she wasn't disrespectful or anything like that, um, but she did make a comment on one of my older videos and she said that my videos were basically unrelatable because I had something like $4,000 come in as income one week. Now, what there's more to the story than that. So I, I'm really transparent because I think it's very helpful 
um, when I'm doing these videos because that's just how how I like to watch videos. I like to see things and you know how the numbers really crunch and things like that. Um, but I also do that because I like to keep a running record. I don't want to do this twice. So what you see here is my working document. I don't have a separate one off off camera um, where I have my real numbers. That's not how I do things because I don't have the time for that. And if I was going to do that, I think I would inflate <laughs> things a lot more than I do. I think that um, if you've been watching my videos and my channel for a while, you've seen us, you know, go through some struggles over the past four to six months and it hasn't been easy. And you've seen us when we have had no income coming in different, different weeks. And you have seen me take a complete hiatus from this channel because I didn't really know what to do. And so when I got a comment like that and somebody saying, you know, my video is basically unrelatable because we have all this money coming in, that extra money that I had coming in on that particular video was for a promotion that I got. And the extra couple thousand dollars that I had come in that month was from a year's worth of back pay. So my hourly wage basically went up and I worked a year at that job without getting that increase. So when my job was finally secured and solidified and signed off on, they gave me that extra few pennies, dollar, whatever it was per hour, um, all in one check. So there are a lot of people here on YouTube that make a whole heck of a lot more money than my household does. There are a lot of people who make less. And I think that that's what these videos are all about. I think when you're watching somebody, you're watching them for their particular experience. You're also watching them to see how they set up their budget and how they make it work. And maybe there's a few tips in there that can be helpful for you. Um, but these videos, I don't think anyone, anyone who does budgeting videos goes into them with the intention of you know, saying, look how much money I make. And, you know, if you can't keep up, don't watch my videos. That's not what that's about at all. And that comment was hurtful to me because we've been going through a really rough spot for many, many months now. And it hasn't been easy and it's been a true struggle. It's been a lot of stress, physically, mentally, everything. We are at the point where, you know, my husband is most likely going to be living in a different state than I am uh, just to hold his job. So this is not easy by any means. And, you know, just to say, you know, anybody who's watching videos like this, just, I don't know if, if it's not for you, then go ahead and move on. But don't make judgments based on one video that you see and one paycheck that you see, because I don't really think that that's fair. Um, so that's my rant, if you can even call it that. Um, that was just me kind of venting because I felt like that comment was hurtful and I feel like one video is not, um, is not an accurate picture, a totality of somebody's life. Uh, so yeah, that's all I wanted to say and, you know, just trying to keep it real here. <laughs> so, um, thanks so much for watching. I will of course be updating this as the month goes along. The only other thing I wanted to show you guys, um, I'm pretty excited about this is my variable expenses monthly audit printable. And I probably will end up putting this if I didn't already on my, um, Etsy shop. I, I can't even remember because I created this last week. Oh, by the way, I finally painted my nails. My no polish January is over. Um, but this is something that's really going to be helpful for me. And as you can see at the top, it says variable expenses, monthly audit. So you can put the month there and the year and you have three columns, one for purchase and or location. So maybe you want to put down gas or maybe you want to put down, um, you know, gas at BP, wherever your gas station is. Um, the category. So those are um, also up to you to create your categories before you start any type of audit like this and the amount. So maybe you want to put um, BP gas station category would be gas and the amount is $35. And so just to keep a running total. And then at the bottom here, I thought what was really cool about this is that you can um, have a space to write the category you spent most from and what that category total ended up being, but then also the total amount spent for the month and total number of purchases. So I'll go over this in another video just so I can get into it in a little bit more in depth, but I'm going to be using this. It's not going to be too crazy to look at for February because I am trying to do 
um, unnecessary purchase, no spend. Um, but I do want to get into the practice of this because I did not do this in January. Now, could I go back and back audit the month of January and go through my receipts? Absolutely. So if this is something that you think would be helpful for you and you're somebody who likes to start things and have like a whole year's worth of completion or something like that, because I'm like that, um, you could definitely go back and do some of that back auditing. But anyway, thank you so much guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody's doing well. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love if you stuck around and did so. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Take care.